Hey everyone, it's me, Michael Anthony Giudicissi. Welcome to All Things Billy the Kid on another special, they're not that special, pop-up episode. <laughs> and uh, I have uh, got some things that I want to pop up, so that's why I'm here. I know, that's what he said. But uh, anyway, I got uh, a handful of things to go through today, and uh, we should get started right away. The first thing is... As promised in the title, got an interesting uh, photo submitted from uh, one of our viewers, and this is from C. Let's just call C C. How's that? Uh, and I'm going to share on out a uh, photo of somebody that you know. And this photo is of none other than Doc Scurlock, right? Everybody knows Doc, the uh, poet, the Kiefer Sutherland Yin son. Uh, of the Lincoln County War. When the Lincoln County War was over, he moved to Texas. Yeah, howdy, Gates, Montgomery, a uh, West Texas patriot. Thank you all for being here. So we all know Doc Skurlock. Um, I want to look at some of the features of his face because I've got a photograph that was submitted by C uh, that looks a lot like Doc Skurlock. It may be a found photo. So this is Doc. This is uh, later in his life. Doc died 1920. Gosh, now I'm going to have to check. I thought I had it. 29. Um, most pronounced about Doc. Always had a good head of hair. Hairline was strong. Liked to wear the round spectacles. His ears were kind of funky. Um, right? They had that uh, look. Uh, gosh, I don't even know what it looks like. But they, they flatten out on top and stick straight out of the side of his head. Uh, seemed to always wear the mustache. That may have been to cover. He was missing some teeth from uh, getting shot. Uh, knocked out his front teeth and, of course, never had any restorative uh, dental work. So this is uh, undisputedly Doc Skurlock, the man who refused to talk about the Lincoln County War when he, uh, you know, went moved to Texas and essentially changed his entire life. Here's a photo submitted by C. Let me arrange these so you can see them. And uh, gosh, Tell me if this guy didn't look at least a lot like Doc Skurlock. Hey, Misty. All right. Brian, how are you? So here we go. Here's a, a viewer submitted photo. And I can't tell you yes or no that this is Doc, but there's some things to look at. And when I first saw it, I immediately I thought, mm, no, nah, I don't think that's him. And then I looked a little bit closer. And I thought, well, wait a minute. We can't write it off so quickly. Um, it, he certainly got the glasses. He certainly got the straw, strong hairline. He certainly got the light hair like Doc had. He's got the mustache. He's got the beard. His face is similarly shaped. Um, this photo was supposedly taken early 1900s. And that's the part that's got me a little sideways on this one. The thing I can't really tell or confirm here, everything else looks like at least it could be Doc. And if it was, this would have to be very near the end of his life. Um, but do these ears match those ears? And it's, again, I, you know, you wish you had a higher resolution photo or scan of it, but do they match? This ear, is it flattened out on the top and sticking out the side of the head? I mean, they certainly protrude. Hey, Brian. Um, but But is it the same set of ears that doc had i can tell you if it's not him this is a guy that you know looks a lot like him could certainly play him in a movie um he's got the glasses that doc always wore and uh he's got the little extra uh, beard down there covering his chin so you can't quite see it looks like in you know the known photo of doc that he lost some teeth because his chin really really flattened out uh over time um and so i just don't know but uh, if this is Doc, then this must be, uh, uh, oh gosh, uh, Manuela Herrera, um, his wife. And she had dark hair. Of course, she could have gone completely gray by this point. So that's not it. The thing that gets me, and maybe somebody out there can help me with this, is that this photo looks to me like 1920s, 1930s, uh, maybe potentially even 1940s, the tinsel I, I, this is just total speculation, but it doesn't seem to me like Christmas tree, you know, the big Christmas tree, the tinsel, those kind of things 
were a you know very early 1900s type thing. Uh, just something about the whole vibe, the clothing, all that seems like it was later. Now, if it was 1920s, well, certainly it could be Doc because he was still alive and this would be him older. Looks like this guy's smoking a cigar. Um, uh, yes, I uh, uh, have some other pics of his wife, Brian. Uh, so it could be him smoking a cigar later in life. But, you know, nine, late 1920s, Depression era, uh, I mean, they, these people are really well-dressed. Uh, it looks like his wife has some jewelry on. Doc was not uh, what I know to be a wealthy man. Um, it doesn't look like the Depression. It doesn't look like you would expect, I guess, the Depression era to look. And if it's later than that, 30s or 40, well, Doc has passed away by that point. So not really sure. Uh, somebody asked about, uh, do we have a picture of Manuela Herrera? And uh, I don't have it at the ready, but I will in just a second. I did. Uh, I went over this with uh, Roy Young when I saw him down in Fort Sumner. Oh, gosh, darn it. That's not what I wanted. Um, but we might as well roll this one up, too. Uh, so I'll keep that photo and let me get another one. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you can skr lock. Yeah, I don't want Wikipedia. I just want to search for Doc Skurlock. And here are the images, and here is his wife, the lovely, where is she? There we go. Stand by for photos of Doc and his lady. All right, and here we go. Okay, so now I can share with you again. All right. So in order for you to believe this is Doc Skurlock, you can see, you know, he he definitely went for the facial hair look. He probably had that, you know, had that thing going on for most of his life. He did even have the square chin here. A lot of kids. So here's Manuela Herrera, uh, Maria Antonia Miguela, Martinez Herrera. Wow, that's a lot of names to keep uh, track of. So here she is as a young woman. Um, and where is she in Doc's photo? Sorry, got too much stuff going on. Okay, there you go. Same woman? I mean, I don't know that you can say from this. They're both women. Um, they both have, <laughs> I mean, all this, you know, featured eyes and nose and all. I just don't know that you can go, um, uh, you can go uh, and say that's her. Uh, Mark says the one on the left. Look, look at the. Uh, help me out with that, Mark. The right looks like the photo fixed. The ear is not right. Uh, I'm not sure which photo you're talking about. So help me out with that, Mark. But here's uh, whoops. Here's a younger Doc Skurlock. This is definitely a, a retouched photo. So uh, you know we can. Take that for what it's worth. But uh, yeah, actually, I guess you can see, you know, here, because this photo is retouched, this area in the ear is not, um, is not actually part of Doc. It's just a uh, photographer's or uh, whoever did the touch up, it's kind of on them to do. So I don't know. Are these guys the same? Maybe. Now, here's the thing. Uh, a, a found photo of Doc Skurlock is not going to uh, is not going to fetch millions of dollars. There's plenty of photos of Doc throughout the years. It's a very cool find, by the way. So I don't think the person that's, uh, you know, that's looking to get these photos authenticated is looking for a big payoff. I think it's a historical, you know, hey, here's one more picture of the Skurlock family. And uh, that would be uh, very, very cool. So, uh, yeah, I guess I got the wrong photo. Let me take a look back for what you were looking for. Um, not sure if this is the one, maybe this one here. So, yeah, but the ears definitely distinctive. And you can even see in this photo where Doc's ears, even though it's not a great high resolution photo, they definitely were very unique um, and definitely stuck out there. So, Anyway, uh, <clears throat> take a look 
and C, you can, uh, let me make this a normal size so some of you can scroll back on the video, study it, screenshot it, and uh, yeah, we will, uh, we'll see if we can come to a conclusion, but at least compelling. There's nothing automatically that eliminates this from being in contention uh, as another pick of our friend Doc Skurlock. Okay, uh, a couple other things to share today. The first one is the t-shirts have started coming in, uh, which is very cool in one way and very not cool in another. Uh, if you got yours, I'd love to see a picture of it. Uh, here is Earl, and Earl said I could uh, said I could uh, share this, so I will. Earl sent me this photo today. He said it's a great day. Got my new Back to Billy the Kid, or all things Back to Billy the Kid, all things Billy the Kid uh, t-shirt. Earl, you look great. And on top of that, it looks really nice wherever Earl is, like nice sunny sky and warm. And it's rainy and cold here in Albuquerque, so I am unhappy. I do not like the uh, weather. The downside of the T-shirts coming in are that I got the two that I ordered. Uh, one was a, supposed to be a size large, and I put it on, and I kid you not, it comes down to my knees. Uh, I got a 2XL somehow by... <laughs> I know somebody's shipping accident. So I'm wondering, did somebody order a 2XL and wind up with a size large? And if that's the case, let me know and I will find, you know, we'll make it right. I'll ship you yours and I'll send you a label to ship me mine. But I have contacted Custom Inc. to tell them that they kind of screwed that up. And uh, yeah, I was kind of bummed. I wanted to wear it for the broadcast, but literally I would, uh, it's just way too big for me. I mean, the shoulder seams are over here. I'm just not, I'm not that strong of a guy. So, um, okay. Now uh, it, you can send, I'd love to see pictures of you just like Earl did. Uh, you can send it to all things. <laughs> sorry. You can email it to Billy, the kid rides again at gmail.com. Or you can send it via Twitter at BTK Rides. You can just find me on uh, Instagram or Facebook or whatever, TikTok. I mean, people are, are figuring out <laughs> how to find me. So go ahead and do that. Sorry, Mark, I wasn't sure which ear you were talking about. Um, but uh, if you email me, I'll send you whatever photos you're looking for. Maybe you can show me what you're looking at. Um, Okay, so the T-shirts are in. Send me a pic of you wearing it, not wearing it. Uh, I don't know, doing whatever you're going to do with it. Um, and uh, if you got a large and you were expecting a 2XL, get in touch with me, and I will make sure that we get that squared away. So there you go. All right, a um, couple other things while I have you here, uh, one of which is I got uh, – I have to confess that I was wrong. And I, I've always told you, I've said, if I was wrong about Brushy Bill, that um, I would admit it and I would take a bite of my hat. Um, and so I was wrong about something about Brushy Bill uh, just recently. And Ted, I'll, I won't put Ted's last name in there for obvious reasons, but Ted called me on it and emailed me something. I had said that Brushy Bill... Uh, had claimed to ride Cyclone, the famous Bronco, which had bucked over a thousand riders um, in 1889. And of course, Cyclone wasn't born until 1903. But Ted was nice enough to do some research over the last 24 hours. And he said, I am wrong. And in fact, he's found a photograph of Brushy Bill riding Cyclone in the Cheyenne Rodeo. And here it is. There it is, absolute proof that Brushy Bill did ride Cyclone, and he got a full eight-second ride on that horse before he jumped off and collected his $10,000 prize. <laughs> I, I did not find this. I swear Ted sent it, um, and, uh, <laughs> and I got a good laugh out of it when he did. So, uh, yeah, if you want to go for Halloween, because we're in the season, it's just three weeks away, as Brushy Bill, this is a costume you could be, Gates is amazing, this is a costume you could be wearing. I think that would be uh, awesome. I may even get it if I can find it anywhere around the Albuquerque area. Mark says your hat isn't going to taste good, Mike. Oh, so Mark is convinced that Brushy Bill is legit. Um, so, hey, Mark, I, I stand by my word. One bite. Um, and, and let me show you the hat, actually. 
I said it with like one of uh, these, like baseball caps. But if you want me to take a bite of the straw one, I will. Um, but but it's going to have to be proven, and uh, I don't think that's going to happen. But I'm I'm the man of my word, so I will do it. Uh, okay. Uh, another thing came up. Uh, first of all, thank you for all of the comments on the Escape from McSween House um, episode. Uh, really great comments. Interestingly enough, more good comments and, and uh, really insightful uh, things from people on that. Yet one of the most uh, minimally watched videos uh, of all of the all the videos that I posted. Um, and I see that there's a trend there that there's a certain um, a certain group of well, there's a group of people that that would much rather look at photographs that might be Billy or Doc or somebody like that. Um, might want to talk a little bit about Brushy. Um, but when it comes to actually the real history, people seem less interested. And, and that's not my perception. That's actually what the statistics on YouTube show. Um, of the, they always show you a running total of the last 10 videos to the minute. So in other words, at this time with this video, you have this many watches. And uh, right now I can, I think I can tell you that uh, the latest video of uh, the escape from the McSween house is running nine or nine out of the last 10 videos, ninth place. Yeah, and, and literally over a thousand less views. So uh, it doesn't mean I'm going to not make them anymore because I know that the people that do watch them appreciate them. But it's interesting what people's um, uh, their their in, where their interest really lies and what you know captures what makes them click on a link and watch a video. So somewhere in there, there's a happy medium. But I do want to share this with you because uh, Lee from the UK. Uh, wrote to me this overnight and said, hey, I've got a question. I love the video. I'm going to Lincoln in a couple of weeks, and I'm not sure the, how this thing is situated. I want to know. And so this is the photo, uh, the drawing rather, that we used of the McSween house. This is the best resolution I could find it, so my apologies. Um, Lee wanted to know how the house was situated in relation to, whoops, in relation to what's there today. And just so you know, um, back here would be the trees in the creek. This is where, uh, behind this wall was where McSween was killed or inside this courtyard. Um, and uh, just off to the right here is where Billy would have gone down into the trees. But the Tunstall store would be directly to the, uh, on the camera anyway, <laughs> to the right-hand side. So across this 40 or 50 yard open area is the Tunstall store and the road, whoops, now I've done that again. Uh, the road that still exists today runs across the front of this house. So where Brandon and I were, were uh, pretty much right about here. I'm not sure if you can see that little area I outlined. Uh, that's about where we were when we were behind the house that exists today. And uh, when you see the actual first person escape from the house, which will be uh, released next week, you'll see that this gate, whoops, let's try that again. This gate right here is where Harvey Morris was killed and Billy and Salazar, uh, I'm sorry, Billy and Folliard uh, and Chavez went out. So if you're trying to get a sense of how things were situated, hopefully this helps. I sent it to Lee and, uh, and I believe that that was helpful to her. Um, it's tougher to imagine because, of course, the house isn't there. And there aren't any other markers here of where those things would be. So that is uh, your battlefield layout. Mark says, uh, you know, Mike, I'm 64 and I just dig the, the stuff out of your channel. I try to watch you faithfully dig it, bro. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. Um, and I, thanks for coming back and watching. Uh, so there's your battlefield. Now, what's coming up? Well, I have something exciting uh, to tell you that we are going to be. I, how about I just tell you what it is, but I don't tell you when. So nobody messes it up. We are going to be doing in the next few weeks a first person escape from the Lincoln County Courthouse, along with the the killing of Bell and Ollinger. 
Uh, so much like we did with the uh, Fort Sumner Final Steps Ability Kid, much like you'll see when I edit and release the Escape from the Burning McSween House, first person wearable camera, um, I'll be Billy. Um, and we're going to take you through not just what you think his escape was and how he especially essentially got the drop on bell, but also all of the different scenarios that are, uh, that are, uh, you know, kind of in consideration. Somebody hit a gun in the outhouse. He wrestled bell's gun away from him and shot him. He, you know, hit bell with his shackles first, knocked him out and then got his gun. Uh, so, we're going to do all of those and we're going to let you decide based on that and the forensic evidence that exists still in the courthouse at the top of that stairwell, what happened. And uh, we're going to, it's, it'll, I think it'll be something uh, since we've got a couple actors to help us out. I think it'll be something really interesting to watch and we'll give you a better feel for just how quick and how coordinated this thing had to happen for Billy to be able to escape. Uh, at least temporarily, depending on what you believe. Misty says, um, I love the escape video, but didn't catch it live due to time it was on. So maybe that's why less views. Uh, no, so this, the escape video, the one you saw with Brandon, is not was not a live video. The, uh, the non-live videos, the ones that are edited and then just released, usually get about twice the, the views of the live videos in the long run. Uh, probably because there's just more content in those and it's not just me babbling on <laughs> and, you know, chatting with you. Um, so I don't think that's it. I just think that it's, uh, it, you know, people have a certain, there's stuff they like. They like looking at photos and going, hey, maybe that's Billy. And they like uh, discussing that back and forth. Um, people seem to like discussing Brushy Bill and, you know, whether he was or not, because there's very strongly held views. Um, but for whatever the reason, the, the real history, like the Wendy Cahill's uh, putting the stone up from there. Hey, Zach's, Zach's, Zaxon. What a cool name. I, you know, my name is just my name. I got to come up with a cool YouTube name like Zach's, Zaxon, um, because mine is just not cutting it. Um, but anyway, I, I appreciate you all being here. So for whatever uh, we're, <laughs> we're getting done here, uh, I, uh, it's, it's terrific for me. All right. So. That's what's going on with me. I'll give you one last look. I see a few of you may whoops, a few of you may have missed it. Uh, submitted by whoops, hang on one second. Uh, submitted by Ted. There it is. Brushy Bill riding Cyclone in the uh, Cheyenne Days Rodeo, <laughs> eighteen eighty nine. Four years before Cyclone was born, uh, but um, there you go. I if anybody has this costume. Let me know where you got it um, or if you can track it down online, <laughs> let me know. Cause I really might just decide that this is the thing to wear. Um, so I can go on that wild eight second ride. Uh, okay. Mark has a question. Might as well answer a few while we're here. Stand by. Uh, I lost my, uh, I lost a button here that I'm looking for, which is the, hey, stop streaming button. <laughs> or stop, not stop streaming, stop uh, sharing. But I can't seem to find it, so screw it. Uh, how long, I think you mean Ollinger, Mark. How long was Ollinger in the bar before they heard the gunshot? I think that's what you're asking. Um, so Ollinger had taken prisoners to dinner, <laughs> Gates, uh, and uh, the, the gunshot was instantaneous. Uh, Steve Cedarwall and... Uh, you know, former Lincoln County Sheriff Tom Sullivan uh, did that. They tested it. Um, it. They fired a gunshot and they had people at the other end of Lincoln, which is a mile away. And everybody throughout town was able to hear the gunshot. So Ollinger at the Wortley was, you know, gosh, I don't know, um, a, a tenth of, a, you know, several hundred feet away. He would have heard it instantaneously. If the question is how long had he been away from the uh, courtroom or the courthouse, before Billy made his escape, I don't have that answer for you, uh, but it would have to be at least a handful of minutes because Billy did go to the outhouse. Billy did come back up the stairs, did make it to the top of the stairs before something happened with Bell, and he was able to shoot him and then set up 
to assassinate Ollinger. So uh, it was not a few seconds later. It was at least some number of minutes, but I'm not quite sure how long. If I'm Billy, when I see Ollinger go and I know he's there, I want to get this thing done. I want. I don't want to wait any amount of time and think, well, what if Ollinger decides to come back? What if the prisoners get, him, get their dinner to go? Uh, you know, anything like that. I mean, as soon as he's out of sight, uh, then I want to uh, I want to make sure that I execute my plan, give myself plenty of time and probably enough daylight too, just to make sure that um, that's Jake uh, enough daylight to make sure that uh, I you know I can escape and you know provision myself for the run I have to make. So there you go. Um, Mel says I need this costume for Billy Palooza. That could be. I could see myself marching down, down the street in Lincoln with that. Gates says Magnum Judicissi should be, <laughs> should be my name. Uh, I'm going to take that one under advisement. I appreciate that. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's a good one too. If you have any other good cool YouTube names like Zax Zaxon. Um, please let me know. Zach asks, why would Pat go off and leave Billy in jail, who's the most famous outlaw to his deputies? Maybe Pat set the escape up, just a thought. Hey, that thought has crossed many people's mind. It was irresponsible um, and probably, uh, at least at that point, the worst uh, tactical decision that Garrett had ever made. Yes, he needed to collect taxes, without a doubt. Um, there was a sawmill much nearer by than White Oaks where wood for the gallows could be ordered. So I don't know that that was really a, a specific reason. But tax collecting was the sheriff's job in the county. Lincoln County was not a rich county. Um, and so they would definitely need that money. But could Pat have waited two or three days? Yeah, I think so. I don't know why. I'd like to ask him. I'd like a real answer to uh, to that question. I think it's... Uh, it's a good one. Misty likes the name Magnum Judicissi. Uh, I think that's the one. I think that's what. Yeah, Magnum Judicissi. Can I keep? Can I keep Anthony in the middle? Because that's my dad's first name. So Magnum Anthony Judicissi. That would be good. Um, yeah, that'd be perfect. <laughs> so, there you go. Uh, oh, here we go. Stop screen. It's interesting that. Uh, StreamYard, the software I'm using, keeps changing where the controls are. Literally, th it, they changed within this broadcast. Um, I'm not sure why, but that's why I couldn't find it. Uh, Mark says, big nose Kate would look good on that horse. <laughs> yes, she probably would look good on that horse too. So those are the things that are going on. What's coming up? Well, we've got some good stuff. Of course, the big, sh the big, the big live show, um, on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow, interviewing Josh Slatton of Billy the Kid's Historical Society. He's coming back to talk about, finally, to talk about some of the new discoveries that they've made. Um, and there's some pretty cool stuff that I, I, I think he'll want to tell you and not have me do. Uh, but, uh, you know, new graves that are going to be marked, new Billy the Kid sites that have been found um, that were kind of lost to history uh, up uh, uh, you know, up until now. And so uh, Josh will be joining us tomorrow afternoon. That will not be a live show, but it should be posted tomorrow. Monday's the live show. We've got some other stuff coming up next week. And then uh, the week after we should have the final, uh, see, the final escape, I guess, of Billy the Kid from uh, the Lincoln County Courthouse. So that should be great too. Uh, Mel, uh, maybe, well, I guess Mel's all set, right? Because she already got some place to stay, but it looks like people are lining up for Billy Palooza, our big weekend in Lincoln, September 23rd, 24th next year, music, tours, um, uh, speakers, meals, raffle, all that kind of stuff. And it looks as though things are getting booked up because I think Mel got the last place in town. So if you want to go, um, and I hope you all want to go, that would be great. Uh, you'll want to look in Rudoso. Uh, you can... At Rudoso is 30 minutes, Capitan's 15 minutes. There's uh, hotels and motels in both of those. If you want a little bigger city environment, you can stay in uh, 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 Roswell, which is a, a pretty good 60 or 70 mile drive, but it's pretty quick. It's less than an hour um, and it's a real beautiful ride. So that's not bad. Uh, Mark, uh, uh, East 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So 4 p.m. Pacific time for the live show. Um, and 
Yeah. Uh, Zach says, what do you think of the new Billy series? If you've seen it, many errors in it. I saw only the first episode, Zach. I couldn't personally hang in there because um, it just moved too slow for me. And But I, there was in the first episode a number of errors. But I'm hopeful. I, here's a conversation I had with my buddy Steve Cedarwall just yesterday. I said, look, a rising Billy tide lifts all boats, which means that every time – there's a new book, a new film, a new controversy, a new anything about Billy or Brushy or Miller or anything. Interest in Billy the Kid goes up. I see it in my projects, my films, um, uh, my books, those kind of things. So I wouldn't uh, – I, I, I don't at all want to see any of these things fail. I hope that the second season on Epics uh, winds up – uh, doing well as being better written includes more of the actual, you know, Lincoln County war happenings uh, because I think it's good for everybody. And I would like to see it if they do a good job. So I just haven't seen Mad, Mad Margie says they racked up as many inconsistencies or inaccuracies as possible. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that that's probably true from what I heard. Um, but uh Mad Margie does not like the show. She said it's woeful, Zax. Woeful. I love that word. That's a $5 word. Lead character has no personality. We certainly know, or at least we think we know, that uh, Billy had personality, if nothing else. So it's a challenging thing to uh, to cast to get the right uh, actor for that. Mitt Michigan Z Sage says, wish I could talk the wife into heading to Billy Palooza, but seriously doubt she'd go for it. Well, Sage, let me talk to her. Let me <laughs> have her email me or something. There's there's tons of other things to do in, in and around Lincoln Rodoso. There's great shopping, great sightseeing, great restaurants, great food, great. I mean, it's really beautiful. Maybe I can talk her into it. I don't know. I'm willing to try. So uh, have your have your you and your wife email or something, and uh, who knows? Maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll get there. <laughs> but uh, September twenty third, twenty fourth, rooms I guess are going fast. There's no official host hotel. We may need to uh, we may to need to uh, have one of those uh, in case we wind up with some overflow. But uh, as of right now, I'll be sleeping in the back of my truck because <laughs> there's no place even for me to stay. But I'm sure we'll figure it out by then. Okay, gang, thanks for uh, joining me today. Hope we cleared up a few things. Brushy Riding Cyclone. Uh, now you know a little bit better the lay of the battlefield in uh, the escape from the McSween house. And, of course, our photograph of, uh, is it, is it uh, the, a new photograph of Doc Skurlock uh, late in life uh, before he passed away? And while he absolutely steadfastly refused to talk about Billy, the Lincoln County War, or anything that had gone on, or... Is it just somebody that looked a lot like him? Well, hopefully we'll find out. And hopefully C, who submitted the photo, will find out and have it authenticated as Doc Skurlock. I'd love to see that because uh, the more history, the better. All right, gang. Uh, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow night for the uh, Josh Slatton interview. And uh, Monday night on the big live show, bring your questions, bring your answers, bring your insults. Uh, bring your pictures of yourself in your all things Billy the Kid shirt. And if you got if you got an, a large and you ordered a 2XL, please get in touch with me. I'm going to make sure that uh, uh, Custom Ink makes it right. But I also would like to ship you your shirt and I will do that. So email me Billy the Kid Rides again at gmail.com uh, or on Twitter at BTK Rides or you just find me personally on other uh, uh, other whatever social media. Uh, check the ears, I will, Mark. Absolutely. Mid-Michigan Sage says, Doc's wife doesn't even look Asian. Yin Sun! Uh, no, she does not. And he doesn't look like a school teacher from New York. So on that note, I'll see you all next time on All Things Billy the Kid. Take care, everybody. Good seeing you.